Alright, what's up fools? We got another episode of Fooling Around. <laughs> and we got two guests today. How special. <laughs> hi Kate, hi Val. Hi. <laughs> Alright, how do you know me? We know you through work. We worked at the same uh, physical therapy clinic. Mm -hmm. Yep, a couple years together. Yep. Mm -hmm. Val and I are physical therapists. Mm -hmm. And uh, we help train Wes. On everything he knows. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> all right, I guess I guess, I guess that basically explains what you guys do. Um, all right, let's let's get into the nitty gritty. Um, can each of you give me a cause or an issue that you feel is important but you don't feel uh, gets the necessary recognition that it might get or it might not get enough coverage in the news? Mm -hmm. Um, I think there are many issues, uh -huh. <laughs> However, um, a big issue that I encounter on an everyday basis is women's health and awareness of women's health, what's normal, what's not normal, people are afraid to ask questions, um, people aren't really educated on what's normal and then mm -hmm. that leads to issues of you don't know when to ask a question because see something on social media or your friend mentions something that's abnormal and you're just like oh that sounds about right mm -hmm. your experience kind of dictates what you encounter or believe is normal mm -hmm. um, I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist and an orthopedic physical therapist and I don't think a day goes by that people don't say I wish somebody would have told me this sooner or I wish I would have known this or, oh, you know what? I actually did talk to my mom about this when this started to happen. And she was like, oh yeah, that happened to your grandma or that happened to me too. When it could have been prevented in the first place if people talked about it beforehand. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can recall my own experiences with the first time going to see a gynecologist or my first time experiencing anything to do with my pelvis and going, is that normal? And you know, you talk to your friends, but your friends don't know either. Really, there's no great education, and there is a lot of stuff online, but people don't even know to look for it. They don't know it exists. So I find that now that we're in the age, or I'm in the age where all of my friends are having kids, that a lot of them start to say, is it normal that I kind of pee a little bit when I cough or when I sneeze? And the answer is like, no, but it's common. So if you just know, oh, that happened to my friend too. You just think, I have to live with this. But you really don't. Um, I find that if we could just educate people a little bit sooner, prevention is way easier than treatment. But uh, people don't know how to ask the question. They don't know that they need to ask a question. But if there was more awareness of women's health, then people would feel more open to ask those questions and prevention would be a lot easier. Um, I think that we were talking about a little earlier before this video that kids in a school setting, you don't really want to ask those embarrassing things and your moms or your dads, they don't really know those embarrassing things to tell you either, you know, that they can't share it with you so you don't know how to ask it. But if we start educating adults and kids, it leads to a conversation of this can happen. I remember when I first met my first pelvic floor physical therapist, she told me about how she taught her daughter how to put a tampon in, mm. like in person. And I was like, that is not my experience, nor would I have ever asked my mom how to do that. Mm. Like I remember the first time getting my period and being like, I don't wanna tell anybody, I don't know what to do with this thing. I'm gonna look at some stuff up online. And you find so much bad stuff and so much stuff that's not real, that you don't know what to trust. Um, versus being able to have that open relationship like that pelvic floor physical therapist had with her daughter. You know, her daughter got good education on what to do and she knows she can ask questions, but that doesn't exist because of not knowing both in adults and in kids. Yeah. Thanks, Kate. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Hey, Val. Okay. <laughs> Well, I think um, especially, I mean, even before pandemic stuff um, that, you know, 
can spend a lot of time online and um, maybe don't have the right like adult support or um, people to talk to when mm -hmm. problems come up. And um, so, you know, I think just ha developing more systems for kids to have in person or um, more consistent support that's outside of just the online, their online presence. Mm -hmm. um, and then my second issue <laughs> or concern or topic to address is um, the fact that women's shoe sizes typically do not go up <laughs> beyond 10 or 11. Uh, what, 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 what shoe size do you wear now? So, I am 6'2", and I would wear like a 13 in women's, and those are very, very hard to come by. So, that's my other thing. <laughs> yes, shoemakers out there, please, more sizes. So that I can look cute. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Even in men's sizes, they don't uh, come up that big. I know. No. I know a couple of uh, people who do drag, and they even have a hard time ah. wearing drag shoes. That's true. It's important. It is. Yes. <laughs> Style. Especially these days when we need entertainment. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um. To end it, let me let me just ask both of you: uh, What are your goals, either for the coming year, immediate goals, or um, till you die? Mm. Well, my one for this year, especially, is um, to become to work on being more proficient with Spanish. Um, the population that I serve with physical therapy is um, pretty highly Spanish speaking, and so I have a much easier time just building rapport and establishing relationships with them if I work on my Spanish. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Nice. <laughs> Kate? I mean, obviously I think I would love to increase education on public health, women's health in general. Mm -hmm. um, I think that education is vital with any topic and mm -hmm. asking why things happen the way they do uh, opens a broader line of communication for everything from politics to religion mm -hmm. to health and fitness and I think that I would like to find a way to expand to everyone that it's okay to ask the question why and not just assume something is the way that it is. Mm -hmm. I think that the world is very emotionally charged these days and people are afraid to be wrong and I think my overall goal would be to just teach people it's okay to be wrong and it's okay to ask the question and mm -hmm. if you don't ask the question we can't kind of come to a resolution so I'd like to find some sort of outreach in my life where I can just help people mm -hmm. do that um, whatever topic it may be mm -hmm. obviously I want to learn more to be able to help people but also I'm not afraid to say I don't know the answer to that and look for help somewhere else but mm -hmm. I think finding a, a platform or some I think in person is way more applicable easier for people to let go than mm -hmm. they can uh, I can help them and they can help me just make the world a little bit better mm -hmm. and real quick since since you talked about it are there any um, resources or books that you have on your head that is uh, people see this and they think yeah like I have those problems but um, they might not want to talk to a person yet is yeah. there like a resource they can check or can I link your email in you the description can, you can definitely uh, have people reach out to me um, I'm more active on Instagram so there's a lot of Instagram pages that I follow um, that have a ton of great information mm -hmm. um, one that I've particularly liked that actually a patient educated me about is empowered and expecting. Um, it's mostly for like pregnancy related issues if you're in that age bracket, but it's also about just fitness of your pelvic floor and what it's supposed to do during labor and delivery or a C-section or what symptoms are common and normal. And it has exercises on what you can do. I think that that's a, an interesting one. And it's a, a physical, a pelvic floor physical therapist and a, um, 
like a fitness trainer who does mostly pelvic health training stuff. So it's good for those active people who have pelvic floor dysfunction as well. So power lifters, uh, runners, things like that. Uh, it's a good resource. But also the um, APTA uh, has a women's health section and there's patient resources on there that you can all look at. You know, finding those reputable sources uh, mm -hmm. is a big thing. There's also like the Pelvic Guru or Herman mm -hmm. and Wallace. Um, they have little blogs that just can help you begin to ask the question. And also, um, there's a, a newsletter through the underwear company Thinks. Thinks makes uh, period underwear um, that you can wear during your menstrual cycle. And I think it's a great product for people. You know, it helps reduce waste and things like that. And it's sanitary and healthy and easier to kind of do, especially if you have pelvic pain and you can't tolerate a tampon. It's a great thing. But they have um, like weekly newsletters that they send out mm -hmm. and it has just topics. Why does this hurt? Is it normal to do this? And it just lets you know a little bit more of what issues there are and where to begin to look and they have references and resources. Cool, nice. Thanks, Kate. Um, so I'll go ahead and leave screenshots and some links from the resources that uh, Kate suggested, but um, I don't know if you guys noticed, it's a little rainy and miserable <laughs> outside. Normally, I think for the previous ones that you'll see, I'll, I try to go for a run or a bike ride, but we, we ended up just walking and getting coffee and food. So, <laughs> all good stuff. Um, but with that, I'll, I'll see you guys on the next one. Alright, thank you. Bye. Can we <laughs> I, 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 no. I, I definitely don't know how to use iMovie and I no. can't. And I, <laughs> I can't. Oh my god, they are really, really cute. Hi. Hi. Oh. 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 I want to be your I can shift over to Kate and then come back to you <laughs> if you want okay. and then just make it look like you talked first. Yeah, go, go to Kate. <laughs>